Howdy! <laughs> you know, every once in a while, I have to remind myself I'm not in Texas. So we're going to do this again, and we're going to do it differently. So, greetings, everyone. How are folks doing today? <laughs> Before I continue, I do not want you all to feel bad or guilty or sorry. I've had a great life so far, and I'm incredibly grateful for my loving parents and the journey I have had and the experiences I have had on that journey. Now, despite poor living conditions and financial limitations, I'm grateful for the primary education I received. It allowed me to realize that I can improve my life outcomes and those of my family through better employment and civic engagement as a result of educational attainment. After high school, that is 10th grade in a common Indian education system, I was fortunate that my aunt saw fit to sponsor my education and support my education at one of the finest junior colleges in India. It is her support that permitted me to move beyond the English instruction I was given at a missionary school and experienced life in a metropolitan city. She provided me with the means to succeed at a competitive junior college, as well as my first two years of engineering. Her support never wavered, and she even encouraged my desire to transfer internationally to Texas A&M University, where I could better utilize my talents and realize my potential. Now, my life story exemplifies how educational attainment can empower individuals to improve their lives. And it also exemplifies and demonstrates that even those who have talent, drive, passion, can only go so far unless they are also fortunate enough to have access to opportunities. Now, navigating the American higher education system was an overwhelming experience. I was by myself in a country I had never visited before. I was learning to understand a new culture and its systems. I was also navigating unfamiliar educational system that had shorter semesters, used letter grades instead of percentages, and operated on a cumulative performance throughout the semester instead of end of the term exams. This was also the very first time I was freely exploring my identities and who I was as a person. During this time, I went from being a merit student to failing classes. So yes, navigating the American higher education system was an overwhelming experience, and it also helped me grow. During this journey, I realized the importance of surrounding myself with individuals who would amplify my light. I am fortunate to be surrounded by many individuals who continue to love me, mentor me, guide me, individuals who continue to amplify my light. They continue to bestow upon me their kindness and gifts of knowledge. Today, I would like to share two of those gifts with you. One of the individuals who supported my journey was Catherine Greenway. While Catherine is no longer with us, her kindness lives on. The first of the two gifts Catherine shared with me come from the book, It Was on Fire When I Lay Down on It. I think it is an appropriate gift to share as you embark 
on the next chapter of your journey. The grass is not, in fact, always greener on the other side of the fence. No, not at all. Fences have nothing to do with it. The grass is greenest where it is watered. When crossing over fences, carry water with you and tend the grass wherever you may be. I hope you find this gift as useful as I have. Now, circling back to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 26, I did not learn about this right until I was an undergraduate student. Education has become a cornerstone of our society. And in the absence of access, equity, and inclusion, the same cornerstone becomes a system that holds and perpetuates systemic inequities and marginalization of individuals. Affinity celebrations like this one celebrate the perseverance and achievement in the face of historic and ongoing exclusion and marginalization. And as we celebrate today, it is important to acknowledge people who have come before us, individuals who have paved the way for us, and those who have supported our journeys. So let's ensure that the joy of our celebration reaches the hearts of these individuals and inspire future generations. As we celebrate our participating graduates, we will be celebrating them and recognizing them in three different ways. First generation college graduate medallion recognition. First generation college graduate medallions are awarded to recognize and celebrate the achievements and contributions of graduating students who are first in their family to complete a degree from a college or university. A medallion depicts a sunburst overlaid with the University of New Hampshire shield, symbolizing empowerment through educational attainment and a bright future. This is our very first time awarding this recognition at the university. The Lavender Stone Recognition. Lavender graduation ceremony was created by Dr. Ronnie Sonlo in 1995 at the University of Michigan. Three, three graduates participated in this very first Lavender graduation ceremony. By 2001, there were over 45 Lavender graduation celebrations at universities and colleges nationwide. Our lavender stole is ornated with the colors of progressive pride flag. The color lavender has been symbolic of LGBTQ plus identities over time and is significant to the LGBTQ plus history in many ways. For example, it represents a combination of the pink triangle that gay men were forced to wear in concentration camps and the black triangle designating lesbians as political prisoners in Nazi Germany. The LGBTQ plus civil rights movement took the symbols of hatred and combined them to make symbols and color of pride and community. Another representation is mixing of gender normative colors such as pink and blue. Pink representing cisgender femininity and blue representing cisgender masculinity. Combining the two genders, gender assigned colors, blurs the lines between masculine and feminine which challenges society's gender norms. Like the medallions, this is our very first time awarding lavender stoles. Kente cloth recognition. The Kente cloth stoles are awarded to recognize and celebrate the achievements and contributions of graduating students who identify within the BIPOC community and students from other historically excluded backgrounds. Our stole is ornated with Adinkra symbols. Nia, Oni, Nu, Su, A. Uh -huh. It translates to one who does not know, will know from learning. It is a symbol of perseverance, service, and hard work in acquisition of knowledge and lifelong learning. Idin Krahine, symbol of charisma and leadership. Anasi and Tongtan, symbol of wisdom, creativity, and complexities of life. Now, 
Celebrations like this are not organized in isolation. We are grateful for the campus-wide support for today's celebration. I specifically would like to acknowledge Edward Federman, class of 74, and Diane Federman, class of 75, for their support of the Albani J. Borgard Center for Equity, Justice, and Freedom. Can you please appreciate and have a round of applause? <laughs> and there are two individuals who have worked hard alongside me to make our graduation celebration possible today. Can we please appreciate Dean of Students Michael Blackman and Sharon Talton? Sarah Wilson from the Division of Student Life has gone above and beyond her responsibilities in support of the Borgard Center activities this year. Can we please appreciate Sarah? <laughs> to all of our graduates, many congratulations on your achievement. I'm proud of each and every one of you. I am hopeful, very hopeful, and cannot wait to witness the amazing things you will do to better our world. And thank you for affording us this opportunity to celebrate you today. So, let the celebrations commence!